All right, guys, let's get back at it. It's time to fit the crankshaft. All right, so for those of you who aren't familiar with this engine or are new to this video series, uh, first of all, hi, welcome to the shop if you're new. Um, Alice Chalmers B engines had shims that look like this between the caps and the block so that if you were in a pinch and couldn't get new bearings and just had to finish plowing that field or whatever you could redo the bearings from the bottom of the engine basically uh, without having to pull the whole engine apart and like I said in a pinch that could work uh, long term not not great because you're adjusting just this surface the sides are gonna remain the same so what that means for us is we have this slightly bit of a pain in the butt system to deal with today so I don't know how other guys do this and this is my first time fitting a crank in an engine that has shims so Based on what I've been seeing by how other guys do it, this may be a bit more than I have to, but it may not. Like I said, this is my first time, so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do it. If you want to do it this way, that's fine. If you don't, uh, I think that you can do it with less steps, but let me show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so here in the manual is... Uh, visual of what we're going for. We've got our shells, we've got our shims, we've got our cap. And the shims hold the cap away from the block so that it doesn't excessively crush the bearings. So the manual calls out for about a thou and a half, I think somewhere it says a thou to a thou and a half crush. And what they mean by crush is just basically uh, interference between the two halves so that's about seven tenths per bearing where they're gonna smash together so what I'm gonna do is get a reading of how far apart these bearings are holding the cap without a lot of pressure on them because if we get not enough shims in there we're gonna get excessive crush on the shells and when we get excessive crush on the shells they're going to start pushing in and wrecking our clearance on the sides of the bearing okay so I'm going to start with number two that's the middle bearing and the first thing I've done obviously is I've cleaned everything up really nice I ran a flat file over the machine surfaces to make sure that the threads didn't pull anything like that ran a tap through the threads we're all good so, next thing we're going to do is put in our bearing. And on the bearing you have a little notch and an oil hole. And these will only go in one way. And we're going to try and get this as even as possible from side to side. Again, this might be overkill, but hey, why not? So we're sticking up seven on that side. I'm willing to bet it's more on this side. Five. Oh, I'm pretty good. All right, so we're within two thousand. That's good enough for this little check we're gonna do. All right. Step number two. Alright, so same deal with the cap. I've cleaned it up, flat filed it. I actually had to run a round file in here because some of this material got smashed down into the counter, into the bore. So, bearing shell is the same. It has the oil hole. It doesn't need to. It doesn't correspond to anything, but that's just a manufacturing decision. Let's get that guy pressed down in there. And then I'm going to do the same check from side to side, try and get it close. 
Okay, so I've got bearing in the cap, bearing in the block. And I did just a quick measurement with that step mic from my machine surface of the block, the top of the bearing on both sides, make sure they were fairly even. And I did the same on the cap. And I say should be because we're going to check that now. Caps are marked, notched to the cam side. And I'm just going to loosely snug the main bolts up. So what we're looking at now is this picture minus the shims. So now what I can do is take my feeler gauge and figure out what that gap is. Remember mathematically we were at about 15 thou. Got 15 going in on one side, not quite on the other. Alright, so I've got about 13 on this side, about 15 on this side. Now for part B of this, just sitting where we're at, the diameter on the top and bottom of this bearing should decrease between a thou and two thou when this is all torqued down with the proper shim stack. So while this is in here like this, I'm going to take a measurement from bottom to top to see about what the clearance is sitting at for the crankshaft. Okay, so I did all my checks. First I took my feeler gauges, found out what my gap was between the cap and the block. That's sitting at about 15th out right now. So, then I took my telescoping gauge, checked the bore from the top to the bottom. And that was about two grand bigger than the middle of the uh, clearance spec. So it was you want a thou to two thou clearance right now it's at about four so we're gonna bring that down when we put the shims in and crush it and since it's at about fifteen thou if I put about uh, thirteen to fourteen thou worth of shims in there that'll put us right where we want it so now that we know where this one's at we're gonna do the same with the front and the back and keep it moving next step of our process is add the shims that correspond to the amount of crush we want to get on those bearing caps. And I am reusing shims here because these are in good condition. Uh, however, if I didn't have any shims laying around in good condition, which I do because I got a whole box of them in a swap meet once, uh, I also have a machine where I can just laser amount of sheets of brass at work so options all right so next what I'm gonna do is I am going to check the clearance on the crankshaft using plastic gauge now that I have the shims in we're just gonna double check the numbers off the telescoping gauges so with everything still dry I'm gonna put the crankshaft in and then I'm gonna torque it down I'm gonna take it off and we'll see what the plastic gauge looks like
It's probably kind of hard to see on the GoPro. Got this. Got the plastic gauge in there, and the front two. It's open, but it's good. The back one. I'm gonna show you something to watch out for, because it just happened to me. This shim worked its way under the bearing and that will hold the whole thing open and that's why this one has ex obviously that's the oil group but that's why this one had excessive clearance on it so when you're torquing it down make sure the shims stay out of the bearings All right, guys, we're all torqued down. Like I said, 80 pounds on the nuts. I do it 40 and 80. We have a good spin. It's not sticking. So I'm gonna give it a end play check. And because I don't have my indicator here, it's at work, I'm just gonna use feeler gauge for now. All right, so to check for end play without my indicator for now, this is just gonna be a rough check. I can already feel it, but 
we're just going to stick a feeler gauge between our thrust bearing, which is in the front cap, and the timing gear, and the first rod journal. Okay, so the manual I have is the abridged uh, IT manual, and it didn't have a spec for crankshaft end play in it. So, a uh, quick Google search, it seems like most people agree that it's uh, 10 to 10 to 5 thousandths end play. So, push it forward all the way. Five goes in, no problem. Ten goes in. Ten felt pretty snug, though. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Got the crankshaft in, all set to go. Uh, next time, I think we'll do put the pistons in. See, you're going to be pistons or camshaft. Haven't decided yet, but stick around. It's going to be more interesting stuff to come, and this is starting to look like a real engine, and I'm getting pretty excited about it. See you next time, guys.